Touch and go will soon end the 10% surcharge imposed at parking facilities, Parliament was told. Deputy Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Chong Tian Jen says that while all future contracts between Touch and Go and car park operators will have no surcharge for the existing contracts, the surcharge will end in stages. Chong said the existing contracts were executed under the previous government and was also a burden to consumers. This was in response to a question raised by opposition MP Datuk Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong, according to reports. Asked on the 50 cent surcharge for card top ups, Chong says there are 2,880 locations out of the 11,168 nationwide that didn't impose the top up surcharge. He also pointed out that it wasn't touch and go that imposed the surcharge, rather, the operators of the outlets. Chong added that the Malaysia Competition Commission did not find the touch and go card to be a monopoly, as there are also other e payment cards in the market. Fraser and Eve Holdings says that fresh milk will be its new growth pillar in line with its plan to diversify into integrated dairy farming. CEO Lim Yu Ho says that the move into dairy and crop farming is a result of two years of research. Currently, liquid milk only contributes a low single-digit percentage to FNN's total revenue. Lim points out that the farm gate milk price in Malaysia is one of the highest in the world due to a mix of local shortages coupled with a 20% tax on imported milk. He adds that the first box of fresh milk is expected to be rolled out within 24 months after the commencement of the project. The milk produced will also supplement the raw materials needed for its dairy products like evaporated and condensed milk. To recap, FNN is planning to plough around 650 million ringgit to the first phase of its dairy project on land that is proposing to buy in Chuping Perlis. Singapore Airlines is reportedly expecting its pact with Malaysia Airlines to share revenue and expand code share routes to take off within a year. SIA CEO Go Chun Fong told the Business Times that it typically takes nine months to a year to obtain all the necessary regulatory approvals for the agreement, which has been touted as a win-win for both carriers. He added that both parties are very comfortable with the arrangement, which is how the rivals managed to pull off a deal once deemed wishful thinking. Under the deal, SIA and MAB will coordinate flight schedules between Singapore and Malaysia, share revenue on these flights, offer joint fare products and explore developing air passes. The pact includes SIA subsidiaries Silk Air and Scoot, as well as Firefly, the sister carrier of MAB. Astro Malaysia Holdings and China's iQiyi have launched a new video app, making it the Chinese online entertainment provider's first app outside China. This follows a content partnership inc between Astro and iQiyi this past June. Astro CEO Henry Tan says that the partnership with iQiyi, often called China's answer to Netflix, is timely as appetite grows for streaming services. He explains that iQiyi ticks all the boxes for Astro when it comes to choosing a streaming partner, namely competitive compelling content and good user experience. Astro will also benefit from the China company's knowledge in data analytics and AI. Astro is targeting for an initial 100,000 new free subscribers on the platform within the first year. While iQiyi will mainly feature Chinese-based content, Tan says that three original Astro shows will also be made available, with more to be added. He adds that Astro is continuously looking for new streaming partners and is currently in discussion with a few countries. PBB Group's 18.5% owned associate Wilma International will build the largest rice mill in Myanmar's Tilawa Special Economic Zone to capitalise on Myanmar's economic growth. This is according to Wilma Chairman and CEO Kwak Kun Hong reports 11 Media. The mill will be built by Wilma's Myanmar subsidiary and is expected to produce up to 1,200 tonnes of rice per day. It was reported that once the mill is complete, rice bags will be exported to other countries via Tilawa. Wilma Myanmar had opened Wilma Jetty in March last year and the Myanmar Investment Commission has granted the company the right to operate Wilma Myanmar Port Terminals Tilawa under a 50-year build, operate and transfer agreement. <music>